my name is Samalara Ba Kudya. And I joined Busy Speakers Toastmasters Club in 2014, 2015, thereabouts. How did I become a Toastmaster? So <laughs> the founding president or the charter president for Busy Speakers Toastmasters Club, Isaac Dante, and I were church members together. And Isaac was truly just inspiring in many ways, but he said he had this idea for a club and encouraged myself, among many others, to join. And so Isaac, if nothing else, is persistent beyond being brilliant and as such a man of great faith. He's the primary catalyst for making me think about my, not just my speech per se, but also my leadership skills. So I really do think that it was Isaac. Okay, so this is my bro okay. In this year, Ghana, it wasn't lost on me that I had returned to Ghana with an accent that wasn't necessarily pleasant to the local ear. And so I realized that at the time I was continuously giving talks and durbas and things of that nature to crowds of 100 to 500 people. Oftentimes they didn't hear what I was saying. And so I think often when people think about Toastmasters, they think, oh, you're nervous in front of crowds, you have to get into Toastmasters. But you may be speaking in front of crowds. However, are they hearing you? And so for me, it was this notion of people don't actually hear me. How do I connect with the people I'm attempting to communicate with? So it truly was broader communication skills at its best. I think it evolved quickly. So in the sense that initially I had this notion that of oh, work, I have to be better. I have to be a better communicator. However, pretty quickly I, I realized that there's so much more that could be learned from this environment. The leadership component, the opportunity to start and be part of something new in the charter process. The opportunity to simply learn from others who had completely different backgrounds, but yet were so brilliant. And so I think uh, being able to see the differences in our, in our backgrounds and see how positive uh, just collaboration and forming coalitions was, allowed me to see new things at work pretty quickly. And so within the first three to six months, I jumped right in, obviously, the moment they were like, okay, you need an icebreaker. I said, me, 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 me. So I jumped in within the first few weeks and completed my icebreaker. I say that, but Anthony Sappho tells this story of my, my first speech with Busy, my icebreaker. And he saw me out front of the, then it was at the Z internet, near Circle. And he saw me in my vehicle, essentially on the verge of hyperventilating, trying to just ensure that I had memorized my speech well, I was ready for this. And he said some really just comforting words at the time and then walked away, laughed a little and then walked away. And he talks about this because I then went in and I'm sure the first, first or second line there were a couple nerves, but immediately upon starting with my icebreaker, I felt like, yes, this was exactly where I was supposed to be. There is a learning journey ahead and it definitely was true. Over the course of the next few years, I grew and grew within Toastmasters more so than I ever actually thought was possible.
my first leadership role was vice president of membership. And I mean, I was naturally the person who was like, you have to join, what are you doing? You don't know about Toastmasters, let me tell you about Toastmasters. And I thought I was doing something until I really saw Papa Akers grow the entire country club-wise. And I have to say that it gave me an opportunity to see that there are more aspects that I can join in. There were a few other committees and area positions that I have, but I think vice president of membership was probably the most fun for me. It's interesting because I haven't thought of it in this way before, but I'd probably use the word transformational. And I've done a lot of programs where people claim it's transformational and it's going to blow your mind. And it's not that this blew my mind, but it exceeded my expectations. It exceeded my knowledge and tapped into the fact that I needed to, I was just scraping the surface of my identity and I needed to dig deeper. I needed to peel back that onion a little and see who I was from a different perspective. So transformational. I'd also perhaps use grounding <laughs> because it allowed me to simply, I know there are other clubs that are focused on community development or uh, personal development, but Toastmasters kind of combined the two for me. And so it really helped me get grounded personally, but grounded within my community as well. And I really appreciated that. In addition, the third would be I think a little nerve-wracking because there were times where there was this notion that, oh, Samara, some call on Samara. We have portions within a Toastmasters meeting that might be a, uh, I'm, I'm at a loss for the word, a portion where they're asking fun questions on the spot for about a minute of, at a time. That portion is called Table Topics. Table topics. <laughs> and so, uh, though that time is always fun, I think I use nerve wracking because regardless of what meeting I was attending, I was often being asked to join Table Topics. I initially thought, so much fun. After a while, it became, I have no idea about this topic, why me? There are 50 other people in the room, pick someone else. And so, so it, it definitely stretches you. And, and so it allows you to get out of your comfort zone. So yeah, I think all of us need to have our nerves racked at some point. And so I uh, can't get too comfortable. So it was really this, this family created an opportunity for me to be a little a jostled at times. There are a few, I think. Anthony Safo, I will name him again. Eno, Eno Abna, she dear. There was once one of a particular cookie jar that sticks in my head. And of course, Isaac Dante has many that actually ring true for me. Or, and my memory is terrible. So for them to stay with me from 2015 onwards, I think, I think it's remarkable. mentioned a few names before as memorable speeches and quite honestly the th those three have done a great job of inspiring my journey. Anthony Sappho was actually one of my mentors. He was my mentor. Let me say that. He was my mentor throughout my Toastmasters journey. He likes this self-deprecating discussion of oh I wasn't a great mentor. He was an amazing mentor and just an amazing person. In addition, Isaac Dante, just a great friend and confidant, 
Uh, you know, I'm not, I, I think I am inspired by her journey through Toastmasters so much. Uh, just, I've seen her grow, and she's an amazing woman. In addition, Papa Ockhurst himself, I've mentioned already, I think for him, his, his zest for life, but for people, for Toastmasters across the board, Harriet, watching her grow through Toastmasters inspired just many journeys. It inspired me to walk others through Toastmasters. The list goes on. There are a number of people who have just been so inspiring. Moses, there. The, the list goes on. Some of the speeches I've heard, some of the leadership roles that people have taken have really made a difference. But when we talk about international meetings, in those meetings, I think that every single one has poured something into my cup. However, each time I leave knowing that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be and I'm so thankful for being part of the Ghana Toastmasters. So I think I said that I initially joined as a result of wanting to ensure that, you know, my message was landing. It's helped me personally as well. So personally, I think my now husband and I have amazing communication. And part of it is that I've completely changed my viewpoint from simply wanting to be heard to really aiming to listen and be understood. I think that the leadership component is probably uh, <laughs> more gratifying for me than just a communication club. I learned a lot by being in the room of Toastmasters and I think recently, Selassie knows that I was toying with the idea of coming back and joining Possibly a crowd Toastmasters only because <laughs> the <laughs> small child waiting at home might not allow me to do Sunday afternoons. So it doesn't fit into busy time. However, I will find time to ensure that I can join a club over the course of the <laughs> Honestly, you're only giving yourself a disservice if you don't join. The reality is that I don't want to say what do you have to lose. Instead, I have to tell you that there's so much to gain. You have, obviously, new friendships, new people, networking. That goes with any club that you might join. However, beyond that, the personal self-discovery is unlike joining any other affiliate club out there. The personal self-discovery, the professional self-discovery, the leadership skills, and being able to not just speak in front of people, but truly communicate personally and professionally, something that's invaluable that no one can take.